Hi everyone. Uh, today is going to be part two of the uh, Valentine's Day special. It's going to be meal number two and uh, we're going to do filet mignon. We're going to do that uh, lobster tail that's steamed in champagne and uh, we're going to do some potatoes in the oven that uh, hopefully will look like uh, flowers when they're done. Uh, so Anyway, uh, I'm not sure on the green veggie yet or if I'm even going to do one, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, it's going to take some prep time, so um, might as well start getting to it. Hey folks, the sun's going down out there. It's a, kind of a lazy Sunday evening. I got to thinking about it and I was like, I really don't want to cook tonight. <laughs> I'm just tired. Um, I don't have a lot of energy. But uh, sometimes you feel like that and sometimes you still got to cook. So um, I'm going to continue on and uh, I'm hoping it's going to be a tasty meal and we're not going to run into a lot of problems. Uh, basically, um, I had three uh, Yukon Gold potatoes. This is a uh, uh, recipe that I got from Chef John. He, uh, he has to slice these... Uh, whole potatoes and I cut them into slices using a mandolin which I'm terrified of. I don't know why. I mean I use kitchen knives that would lop your finger if you just kind of touched it but uh, I have a, a, nat or a natural fear of those mandolins and losing a fingertip. I just I don't like them but I used one to uh, slice the uh, potatoes down. So um, I've already got the potatoes sliced. Uh, I have got a half a stick of butter that is melted. And uh, I've got some farm cheese. Because I'm too lazy to grate it myself tonight. <laughs> a little mess. Anyway. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's continue on and get going. Right, so I've got these sliced up in a bowl. kind of just laying out in there. So I'm going to go glove up my hands because we are going to toss these in melted butter and Parmesan cheese and salt and pepper. Just like that. Now, I've got a half a stick of butter like I mentioned that I melted and uh, I'm going to pour about half of that on there and I am going to add a pretty good amount of black pepper you put however much you think you like it's going to need some salt Let me open this up a little more so we've got plenty of salt and I, I love tarragon. You don't have to. You can use chives. But oh, you know what? Instead of tarragon, I think I am going to go with rosemary. So I've got some ground rosemary here. And I'm going to put just a sprinkle of that on there. And while smelling this, mm, the other thing I'm going to use is one of my favorites, which is the smoked paprika. So I'm just going to take some of that smoked paprika and throw that down on top just to dust it. And I'm going to start unsticking these together and I'm going to get some butter in there. Then I'm going to add the rest of the butter. And I'm going to add a good, I don't know, a good handful, maybe a little bit more of parm cheese. And I'm going to mix that all up in there too. So we've got some potatoes, we've got some uh, spices, we've got butter, and we've got parm cheese with these sliced Yukon Gold potatoes. 
So now that we've gotten this far, I'm going to add more parm trees. I can hear some of the people saying now, wow, that's a lot of cheese. Well, not that much. I'm shaking it out. And I'm incorporating it among all these slices. It's like a soggy, wet deck of cards. But I'm probably going to continue to uh, mix these up. And I'm probably going to give it another two doses of Parmesan cheese. And we will get back to this um, with whatever my Frankenstein mind is going to put together um, in a few minutes. Alrighty. Oven's preheated to 400. That's perfect timing. So what I do is I got a baking sheet here and I put some uh, nonstick foil down. And to that, I'm going to put a little bit of garlic infused olive oil. Now these are uh, hmm. Let me do one like this. I'm going to throw this ring down. And what we want to do is we want to start with the whitest piece. And we're just going to kind of lay it off to the edge here. And then we're going to take some of these wider pieces and I'll go over to this corner. And other than this, there's no real science to it. I'm just going to kind of uh, drape them so that uh, they're a little off center. And I'm going to use some of the bigger pieces here. Some of the larger pieces. And I'm going to kind of just put those down. Let's see, this one's like a puzzle. This one's not too bad. And then we've got this one. It's not too bad. And we got this one. And we got this one. And so on. And then a little one up on top. So let's try that one with the ring. The next one I'm just going to kind of try just by laying out here on the foil. Kind of stacking one section up in the middle and just kind of layering them down there. So we've got that one there. It's just kind of a pile. All right, I've got two seven ounce ramekins here. And I'm just going to spray those first. And then I'm just going to lay the potatoes down inside the ramekin. And I'm going to do this for both ramekins so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this all night. So we will get back. Okay, so I have these layered out. I did one just a pile sitting there right on the sheet. Uh, I did one inside a little uh, silicone ring. I did two inside a um, seven ounce ramekin. And I have got one 10 ounce ramekin here that I'm going to put in the air fryer. And I'm going to set this at 400 degrees for uh, 45 minutes. And I will check on it you know, every 10 or every uh, maybe every 20 minutes. So uh, let's get this in the oven and get this in the air fryer. And then we'll start talking about steak. I've got two beautiful pieces of filet mignon. Uh, I'm going to lightly salt each side. And basically all you really need for a good steak is salt and pepper. A lot of people don't use any more than that. One of the things I also like to use 
is I make, uh, I use a big wide container, but um, I use a blend of different spices and I use uh, instant ground coffee. So I like to do a little bit of a coffee rub. This is just a group of spices that I found that really complement the steak and I just mix it up in a big batch and write on it steak rub. So, um, so it's not confused for anything else. And uh, when we're about an hour out from putting these um, on the uh, grill, I am going to take them out and just leave them on the counter lightly covered so that they get up to room temp because I don't want the internal temperature really cold and then the outside uh, to be warmed up. And then the, the heat's going to get to it and it's going to be burning on the outside while still raw in the middle, depending on how you like it. So um, let me cover these up. I've got two lobster tails. Um, these were uh, previously frozen lobster tails and they're raw and uh, they're just, it's just a lot easier for me. So um, I've got these two and I've got to prep them. Now to prep the lobster tails, basically all I'm going to do is get between the meat and the shell with a pair of kitchen shears and I'm going to cut straight down right about to the base right here without penetrating the tail. Just enough where I'm going to want to open this up a little bit. I know my, my big meat hook hands are in the way, but basically what I'm doing is I'm just separating the shell from the meat inside. And I need both hands to do this. And then I'm going to gently lift the meat almost all the way out. I'm going to close this behind it and lay this right down on top. So that's it. I'm going to clean out, like with the shrimp, anything that's in the middle here. I'll give that a rinse. I'll put that aside. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to try to do this so that my hands aren't in the way. I'm going to go right along the top here. Kind of working my thumb carefully along the shell so you don't cut yourself. And I'm just kind of getting in there to loosen the meat. I'm going to do that on this side. Just one other thing, there is a little bit of flesh sometimes at the end here. If you want to get the scissor and just cut that. And just open it up and let it drape. Now these are ready to be cooked and they're only going to take about, these are four ounces, and in the steam basket it's only going to take about uh, five, six minutes to cook. So um, this is going to be one of the last things that's going into the, uh, the pot uh, before dinner. So in the meantime, I'm going to take these and I'm going to lightly cover them up and I'm going to put them in the fridge to keep them cold. So here's the result so far. The air fryer after 40 minutes um, pretty much burned everything. So you've got... Tasty crispiness, but everything's pretty much burned on the outside. I tried covering it, and then the air would blow the foil up and off. 
and what you want to do is just get a skewer and you kind of want to go into the center here and see if it pushes through cleanly. You still have a little bit of a crunch to them. So um, I'm going to cover them because I don't want them to cook any more than they are on the outside as far as burning. And uh, I'm going to take the ring off of this one and crisp up the edges a little bit. I'm going to leave this one naked. And this one here I'll probably cover up, but uh, it's, it's looking kind of sad. So it looks like these two are going to be the winners. And uh, I just got to get them toasted a little bit more. So I'm just going to hit them with some foil. I'm going to cover this one just because it's sad. I'm going to cover this one here. Hot. And I'm going to cover this one here. And I'm going to put them in for about another, uh, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 minutes. They should be safe. Well, we're about 45 minutes away from uh, dinner time. So uh, we've got our lobster tails out. And we're just kind of letting those sit. Uh, took the steak out about uh, I don't know, 15 minutes ago, or 20 minutes ago. And the wood cooker is, is going. And... We're going to open up some of the champagne now. So, I've got some Moe champagne here. And it's not going to be, <laughs> this isn't your typical uh, cooking champagne. But uh, I am going to enjoy a glass of it while I'm finishing this off. So, because Valentine's Day is a special day. There we go. So to Valentine's Day, we're going to use about two cups of this champagne with a little bit of water inside a pot. We're going to get to that and uh, right after the steaks are done, we're going to let the steaks sit and uh, then we'll get the lobster in. So good. So I've got my pot on the stove and I've cranked the heat on. And to that, I'm going to add the uh, two cups of champagne. Now you can use any kind of champagne you want. Um, I just wouldn't use something that was so cheap that you wouldn't want to drink it. I've got two cups of champagne in there. I'm going to add a half a cup of water. And I'm also going to add some steamed lemon or some lemon here. Maybe one more piece. drop in my steaming basket. Cover it up and once it comes to a boil I will uh, knock the heat down to let it simmer uh, just so that when I crank the heat back up it'll be ready to steam that much quicker. Okay so I've got the um, steak on the wood-fired uh, grill outside and I've got the probe in those, so I'm going to pull them whenever the temp is actually correct to my liking. 
You can find out lots of different ways to cook filet if you're not sure how to on a grill or on one of those stoves or even in the oven or a pan sear on YouTube or something else. Uh, I think I've done a steak on here before. Maybe that was in the air fryer. Anyway, um, all we've got really left is for the steak to get done. The potatoes are just at a low heat in the uh, oven. And I'm going to uh, steam up some broccoli. And you don't need a video of that. And the uh, lobster. So the water is simmering. We've got the champagne uh, in the pot. We've got the uh, water in there and the lemon. And once that is all set to go, and we're about six minutes out from serving, I'm uh, going to melt a little bit of butter and we're going to put it all together. It's going to be great. So hang in there. The steaks are done. So I'm just going to cover those and let them rest. I have turned the heat up on the champagne so that it is boiling now and producing a lot of steam. And I'm just going to gently put these lobster tails right in there. And I want to cover it up and let them steam for right around six minutes. So we have the lobster tails here and just to clean them up because they've shrunk quite a bit is I'm going to take one of my chef knives and take this excess part away. Same with this one. I am just going to brush these with a little bit of melted butter. And I'm just going to put on a sprinkle of chopped parsley. And now let's put the rest of the dish together. I'm going to take my steak and just kind of lay it right like that. And I'll get my lobster tail there. I'm going to put down some steamed broccoli. And with that butter that I had, I'm just once again going to hit the top of the steak here, a little bit of the broccoli, the lobster, and even the potato. Another little sprig of parsley there. So here, here you have the filet mignon with the uh, champagne steamed lobster tail, some steamed broccoli, and our sliced tomatoes that are very tender and cheesy that kind of resemble a little bit of a flower. So let me just take a quick taste because I do want to sit down and actually eat this. <laughs> that in a little bit of the butter. Mm. Wow. How can you not love lobster? And you don't need to use champagne. I just figured Valentine's Day is something fancy. You can say, well, I've steamed the lobster in champagne. Champagne. But uh, it's not necessary. You can just as easily use water with the lemon. But it did smell really good when it was steaming. 
So uh, let me give a shout to those uh, potatoes. buttery, cheesy goodness. It's got the texture, it just melts in your mouth like a mashed potato, but it's got that baked taste to it. It's got a little bit of texture on the edges where it was brown. And it was so easy, but it's, uh, that was good. Um, by the way, the ones, other ones in the pan, the one I just did plop down, the one in the ring, uh, it'll be okay to have for breakfast, maybe chopped up with some, uh, in a skillet like a hash brown, but uh, the ramekins were the ones that actually won. So we got a little shot of beef. I like mine done really well. So what's for dinner? That smoke flavor. And smokiness, mm, spices, tender, buttery, absolutely delicious. So I know it's an expensive meal, but it's something special that you can do just on a special occasion, a birthday, a Valentine's Day, anytime you want to uh, impress somebody and, and let them know that you're really thinking about them, you care about them, and you really want them to have a special feast. Um, there's not going to be something that you're going to feed to the whole family. But uh, take care of yourself. If you have any questions at all, um, just uh, put them in the message uh, field or message me or put it down below in the comment section. I'll try to answer as best as I can. But I've got to sit down and eat this before it starts getting cold. So um, I hope you have a wonderful night. Thanks.